Welcome to VM Blog's coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023, taking place in Chicago. Today, I have the pleasure of having Edward Bielmetti, who's Developer Partner Manager at Equinix. Welcome. Maybe you can uh, start by telling us a little bit about your role at the company and give us a quick overview of the company for people who haven't heard of you before. Sure. So um, I'm Developer Partner Manager at Equinix for our open source partner program, um, which covers our work with about 100 different open source projects, including about 50 CNCF uh, projects uh, that are that are going on. Um, Equinix, as you as you might know, uh, is a global data center company um, with uh, facilities uh, with about 250 data centers around the world uh, in in um, all the continents except for Antarctica, um, and a global network, including uh, submarine cables uh, to connect them all together. Um, and uh, my role is to help uh, these open source projects that we work with take advantage of the data center uh, compute, storage, and network resources in about 25 of our metros around the world to help them test, uh, deploy, and support uh, the projects that we all depend on. Now, as we're here today to talk about KubeCon and Cloud Native Con event, uh, maybe if you could explain a little bit uh, to prospective attendees uh, how your company fits within the ecosystem that's being discussed at the show. Sure. So the, the Cloud Native ecosystem, um, yeah, especially Kubernetes, um, uh, requires a set of data center uh, support uh, to make it work. Um, and Equinix has a full set of um, full set of resources uh, for making that work uh, to allow people to deploy uh, their clusters on our infrastructure, connect clusters in multiple metros uh, together over our networks, um, build on ramps to uh, other cloud providers to interconnect their networks with ours, um, and generally uh, deploy a modern uh, cloud native infrastructure uh, in, inside our system. Um, specifically to what I'm doing, uh, a lot of those cloud native components are open source components. Everything from databases like etcd, um, uh, service uh, service meshes like Linkerd, what I could go on and on because the cloud native landscape is in very tiny type and has a lot of projects on it. Uh, we directly support about 50 of those projects through the CNCF's Community Infrastructure Lab, where CNCF projects can apply for support and will grant them uh, access to our Equinix Metal computing infrastructure to help what they're doing. Well, you talked about helping customers and how you guys kind of fill that need of the specific resources that are needed for Kubernetes. Um, are there any other specific problems that you guys solve for companies that are using Kubernetes? I think one of the one of the interesting things and one that um is important to talk about is the whole sort of multi-cloud environment where people who are deploying infrastructure across the globe um, are often using a mix of on-prem and cloud uh, infrastructure from multiple providers. And we're in a unique spot uh, at Equinix by having infrastructure in very much the core of the internet and uh, the ability to set up cloud on-ramps and off-ramps with our Equinix Fabric project to really serve as a, inter a neutral interconnection point for um, people's uh, global deployments. Um, and that doesn't show up so much at the individual project level uh, until people try to think about how they're going to test a global deployment. Um, and one of the things that I can provide through the Open Source Partner Program is enough of a global playground, essentially, 
so that people doing large scale efforts can spin up servers on multiple continents and check their latency and check how their algorithms work with the in the presence of that sort of stuff. Um, and just a, I think a unique resource compared to, to what's available out there. Now, can you give us uh, maybe a little deeper dive or rundown of uh, the different technology that your your company is offering? And and while you're doing that, maybe put it into context of what makes uh, makes that technology and your company unique or differentiated in the market. Sure. So um, the long time primary focus of Equinix has been. Uh, being a neutral interconnection point for carriers. So we operate infrastructure, what we call IBX uh, data centers uh, in metros around the globe that serve as an interconnection point for various internet networks to peer with each other. Um, around that business, there was built up a co-location business where in addition to being able to interconnect with other networks at those locations, you could also bring in your own equipment into cages in these purpose-built data centers so that your own, your own data center can live inside and adjacent to the networks that you need to connect around the world. Um, and then the, the expansion relatively recently, the company's been around for 25 years. So in the last couple of years, we've been expanding into a more of a digital services world where, where you want to set up your equipment in these very advantageous locations instead of, well, instead of or in addition to signing a long-term contract and trucking in your gear to our data centers, you can uh, either rent by the hour or by the month or by the year uh, pre-positioned equipment um, at, with an API to let you turn up a new server in, in a minute or two. Um, and that's really a different, it's the same infrastructure, right? It's, it's the hardware, computing hardware storage network at the core of the internet um, but the the difference with the digital services side of things um, lets you lets you do that in a much more uh, cloud style approach rather than a co-location style approach. Right. And KubeCon is one of the biggest industry events uh, of the year here, yes. and everybody uses this time to make new announcements. Does uh, Equinix have anything that they're going to be announcing at the show? Yeah, we have we have work underway to improve some of the primitives that we provide for people who are doing um, uh, Kubernetes deployments on the site um, to uh, speed up the process of balancing loads amongst uh, amongst equipment inside a Kubernetes cluster. And my understanding is that the plan is to have some of those demos uh, at our booth uh, at the show. Um, it'll be uh, something I think primarily of interest to, for people who already know Kubernetes pretty well, as opposed to something brand new uh, uh, for for the public. But given that this is a show with 13,000 of your closest data center and compute friends at it, uh, I think we'll get a pretty good reception from people who understand the problem we're trying to solve and will appreciate uh, how we make uh, deployment uh, fa even faster and easier. Now, one of the other things that's going to happen uh, at, at KubeCon is obviously uh, during the keynote presentations, we're going to hear a lot about big picture items and futures and trends. What uh, what are some of the trends that your company's interested in in uh, as we head into 2024? I think one of the things that, that everyone is interested in and depending on where they are in the ecosystem, maybe be a little bit concerned about um, is AI. Um, and in particular, well, there's the whole question of 
the deployment of AI and what that's going to do to the planet. But the the from the data center perspective, the question is um, AI generates demands for very high density compute. Um, with high density compute comes even greater demands on um, cooling uh, for your equipment. And uh, I know that we have internally been uh, working with a number of our infrastructure partners to look at liquid cooling as one of the opportunities that we would, prov we would provide uh, to our customers to let them uh, let them deploy even denser um, deployments um, and dissipate the heat that's going to be generated from all those. I mean, chips are only getting um, getting hotter, um, and data centers uh, that are of modern design uh, accommodate that, but they accommodate that at some. Um, design expense and operating expense. And so trying to make sure that we've got the knowledge and the supply chain and the infrastructure all well in hand so that people can dissipate their excess heat um, efficiently and effectively. Uh, I think, you know, that's not going to be the typical thing people worry about at KubeCon. It's like, these chips are hot. How are we going to Build the data centers for them, but really we're in a unique position, a, a fairly unique position in the in the ecosystem, to really be where the you know where the chip hits the fan, so to speak, um, to keep things cool. Great, and you you mentioned at the show that uh, you, if people stop by your booth, you're going to be showing some demos of some of the new features and stuff. Um, beyond if for people that can't be at the show or they don't have time to, to stop by the booth, what's a good place where they can go to find out more information about the new features and also uh, about Equinix in general? The um, the website that we have for the Equinix uh, Metal and other uh, digital services products is uh, deploy.equinix.com. Um, we've got a series of documentation there if people want to read about the product. Um, there's some marketing materials there if people want to understand where it fits in, in the ecosystem. Uh, there's videos to, uh, describing things and, and walking people through it. If people do come to the booth um, and it's cold out in Chicago in November, which it's likely to be cold out in Chicago in November, um, we, we will be giving away lovely scarves to keep people warm. So if you see someone with a bright red uh, Equinix colored scarf you you'll know you've come to the right shop great well sounds like a lot of fun uh we look forward to uh yeah we look forward to seeing you guys at the show and uh thank you for taking the time to speak with vm blog today i'm looking forward to the show as well it's it's always fun especially after a couple of years of not traveling uh to see people in person uh, i think it's really important that that people get some face time with each other that's not mediated by computers so much and and just more uh, more face to face time and uh, that'll be that'll be great to see.